So I've been wanting to make this video for a while now because there has been an explosion of these gamer-centric energy drinks out on the market and a lot of them make pretty big claims. And the thing is about these energy drinks is that they are regulated, at least in the US, as supplements by the FDA meaning that they don't actually have to prove that they work or prove what we call in science efficacy. And this can be a huge problem because if you're you know, paying a premium for something, you better make sure that you're getting your money's worth. And one of the problems too is that each of these companies says that they have their own unique formulation of different compounds that will make your brain simply work better. But the one problem too is that simply the science is not really there all the time. Yeah, there's some support here and there, but a lot of times just because you put a bunch of different chemicals in a can doesn't mean it's going to make you, you know, suddenly have the reaction times of an AI. So I have a PhD in pharmacology, meaning that I spend the majority of my life trying to understand how different chemicals interact with the body. And I want to point out something too that when these companies claim that their product is chemical free, it's simply BS. There is no difference between a man-made chemical and one found in nature. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. However, we have to be very careful about how we approach this. We simply just can't chug a drink and see if we win the next round or not. We actually have to do this in a very rigorous scientific way meaning that we need to have a method of actually analyzing our performance. We will be doing this by using a program available on Steam called AimLab, and this helps track your performance uh, through a variety of measures such as accuracy, time on target, uh, shots on target, all these key metrics that we can actually get hard real numbers from and properly analyze the effects of whether or not these drinks actually live up to their hype. We still need to be careful about how we actually do this test because we can't simply try out this aim lab, see how we're doing, chug a drink, and then see like, oh my gosh, we improved by like 20% because this could just be due to the fact that since we played it before, we developed some muscle memory and therefore would have been better anyway with or without a uh, energy drink or one of these gamer drinks. We will also be performing these tests over several days to ensure that the effects of each beverage are as isolated as possible. So what exactly will we be looking at here? Well the first thing that I'm going to be testing is just simply having a glass of water because hydration is important. Our bodies are made out of water, we need that to survive. Um, a second thing that we will be testing as well is just simply the effects of caffeine. A lot of these energy drinks have a ton of caffeine in them and caffeine is a natural stimulant. So in order to control for the effects of caffeine, I'm just going to be having a, a cup of tea or tea in order to match the amount of caffeine found in some of these energy drinks. Now, what about the nitty gritty of this test, these different energy drinks? Well, the first one that I'm going to be having is a monster. It's just, you know, a typical high caffeinated beverage. Uh, it comes with some other additives in there that claim to, you know, enhance your energy and performance um, as well. But one of the products that we will also be testing is one of the more popular gamer energy drinks known as G Fuel. Um, it makes a bunch of different claims about how this formulation is superior to any other energy drink out there and says it's specifically formulated uh, for uh, gamers as well. So I will be putting this to the test and actually see if this product is A, a superior to these other options and B, whether or not it actually works. So this is the uh, aim lab I was talking about earlier and for this test I'm going to be using the uh, motion shot it allows you to test both your accuracy time to target and a bunch of other uh, important uh, methods of actually analyzing your performance so i've played this like once or twice before just to get a feel for how the mode works but this is going to be the baseline test absolutely had nothing uh caffeinated today and let's see how we do we're going to run this test uh, about five to six times under each condition and just see how our performance actually changes now let's see what happens when I have a glass of water. It's been about 10 minutes since I have my glass of water, so let's see if this has any impact on how I do. Okay, so we just finished our first round of tests. This gave us several detailed measurements, such as the accuracy of our shots, how many targets we actually hit per second, overall reaction time, as well as our Bayes test score, which is kind of like a holistic measurement of how well we are actually doing. So in this case, higher is better. And you can see that while there might be an actual decrease in accuracy after drinking some water as well as perhaps a change in our reaction time, these are actually not statistically significant. Meaning that what variation we do see here is actually just due to random noise and not 
actually any real change in our performance. Hey y'all, this is day two of our test in which we start looking at the effects of caffeine on our performance. So we need to look at caffeine specifically because it's actually found in a copious amounts in most energy drinks, typically around the range of 100 to 200 milligrams. And the reason why caffeine is often included in these energy drinks is that it's a well-known stimulant. It basically blocks the receptor in your brain that tells your brain to be tired. Caffeine can increase your ability to focus and decrease your reaction time. So it's entirely possible that the effects seen with these energy drinks are simply due to the fact they have caffeine in it. And we could simply get the same results by having you know, a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. So in order to test this, what we will be doing is first getting our baseline results for today and then having about three cups of tea, which will mimic the amount of caffeine found in uh, these energy drinks that we'll be testing later. So let's get our baseline results for today before we have any caffeine. All right, we finished the uh, baseline results for today and now it's time to have some caffeine. So in this case, I'm having actually four tea bags of Irish uh, breakfast tea, which have about 40 milligrams of caffeine in it. So this will be equal to the amount of caffeine found in an energy drink. And it's important to note too that it takes about 30 minutes for caffeine to actually enter your blood and start having its effects. So before I do the next test, I'm going to wait about 30 minutes. So it's about 30 minutes since I had the caffeine. So let's begin the test and see if it has any effect on my performance. So we just finished today's test and let's look at the data. So in the first graph, you can see that we got our test from day one, which we had our baseline results and then after we had our glass of water. And this is compared to both the baseline from today as well as the effects after we had some caffeine or specifically tea. And what we can see here is that there's really no difference in overall accuracy uh, with the effects of caffeine. However, let's take a look at the rest of the data. What we see here is quite dramatic actually. If we look at the effects of caffeine compared to today's baseline, there is a statistically significant increase in the number of targets we're hitting per a second. And when I say statistically significant, this means that this is not just due to random chance. More specifically, if we look at our reaction time, there is a huge, nearly 100 millisecond decrease in the uh, reaction time after I had the caffeine. And if we look at the test score, which again is kind of a holistic measurement of all these uh, different parameters put together, you can again see that there is a significant increase in our overall test score. So we finished the caffeine test and saw some very interesting results. But now let's actually get into some of these energy drinks. But before we do that, let's set our baseline for today and then proceed on to the test. All right, so we set our baseline for today, but before we uh, continue on to the rest of the test, I first want to kind of talk a little bit about the energy drinks. Energy drinks basically claim that because they're a special formulation, they will make you better alive, more energetic, better runner, better everything. But in a lot of case, uh, there isn't much science out there to support that action. In fact, a few studies have shown that energy drinks don't really do much for you other than just, you know, make you you know, feel like you're a little bit more awake. Um, but in order to actually put this to the test in a game specific situation, I will just be testing a generic energy drink. In this case, I'm gonna be using something called Monster Rehab. It's one of the more common ones. It's a mixture of tea lemonade and their, you know, proprietary energy blend. Um, but in all honesty, it's, I don't expect it to have any more effect than caffeine alone because it has the same amount of caffeine that would be found in the tea we used as a control earlier. So before uh, actually testing uh, this drink, I kind of want to go through the ingredients and just talk about uh, why most of them don't really do much for you. So what we got here is the nutrition label for the monster. And what you see here is they have all these different B vitamins. You see like the recommended daily value is like, you know, 200, 300, 400% above baseline. And you think like, wow, I get more vitamins. That means that it's better, right? Well, no, because the fact that a 99.9% .9 of people get the vitamins they need through their diet. You don't need to really supplement that. And B, uh, B vitamins are known as water soluble vitamins, meaning that if your body doesn't need them, you will just straight pee them out. And therefore taking more than what you already need doesn't help you do anything better. 
Um, B vitamins are very important for energy metabolism and helping to you know turn food into energy. But having more B vitamins doesn't mean you're gonna be better at you know turning that cheeseburger into you know pure gaming rage. So if we scroll down here, we actually will find that they have their own energy blend formula as well, which is this interesting mixture of uh, different ingredients. We got glucose, which is just a sugar. Our bodies need sugars to function. That's not uh, uncommon. They also have something called taurine, which is another essential nutrient. It's actually really important for helping to maintain your retinas, maintain your muscle health, all sorts of important functions in your body. But again, with like the B vitamins, we don't need more of them. If our body has it, it won't do much more with it. And we get plain that from our daily diet as well. And it has caffeine, which is what we are kind of interested in. It has 170 milligrams, which is the same amount that we used as our control with the tea uh, the previous day, as well as L-carnine and inositol. So L-carnine, you might know this from like bodybuilders or it's found in like pro protein powder. It's, it claims to help you know, build up um, muscle, but our bodies actually produce it naturally. And inositol, again, is produced by the body naturally. And while it plays an important role in cell signaling and well as neurotransmitters, it really doesn't need to be supplemented. We don't need more of it. So for this test, uh, like with the caffeine control, I'll be drinking it and then waiting 30 minutes for any sort of effects to kick in. So it's about 30 minutes since I had the monster and let's see if this is any better than just having caffeine by itself. So we just finished our test looking at whether if Monster can enhance gaming performance and the results are pretty interesting. And what you can see here is that there's really not much a difference in accuracy across all different testing conditions. And this is what we've seen uh, previously. And however, if we look at the number of targets hit per second, while there is an increase, we saw the exact same increase with just caffeine alone. And this is not, and there's no statistical difference between these two conditions, whether caffeine by itself or with Monster. And this indicates that the effects uh, of Monster are just due to the amount of caffeine. And there's nothing special in the drink that will enhance uh, the performance. And we see this across the other uh, outputs as well, such as the reaction time, as well as the test score. Simply having caffeine is basically the equivalent of buying an, a regular run the mill energy drink ready for the final day of the test in which we actually look at the effects of G Fuel on our performance. But first, let's get the baseline for today. So before we test G Fuel, I want to actually talk about the ingredients in the same way I talked about what was in Monster. And what you can see is they got a lot of vitamin C, but again, vitamin C is just another water-soluble vitamin. If your body already has the amount it needs, it's just going to get rid of it. Vitamin E, on the other hand, isn't water soluble. It will actually stick in your body if you, if you have too much of it. And you can actually see this is reflect on the label. They don't, honestly, again, you get most of this from your diet. Niacin is another uh, B vitamin. Um, again, you get this mostly through your diet. And oh my gosh, they are using so much vitamin B6 and B12. Again, like how I explained the monster energy uh, portion, the B vitamins are important for energy metabolism and turning food into energy. 500%, 17,000 percent of vitamin B12. That is insane. Your body doesn't need any of this. It's just going to be honestly peed out after a few hours. Choline is, you know, found in a whole bunch of things in the body. It's important for your cells. It's important for like neurotransmitters. But again, you get most of it from your diet. You don't really need any supplements. All right, let's take a look at their energy complex here. This is interesting. So we kind of already talked about taurine. We'll go through that. Uh, L-citrulline malate. Uh, this is kind of another amino acid precursor. For those who don't know, amino acids are basically the building blocks of proteins in your body. They're incredibly important. But again. Uh, you don't really need this. There is there is some evidence out there that says like this is important for uh, you know workout recovery and that sort of stuff. But again, the evidence is very poor. And honestly, you would need way more of it than what's found in this energy complex to have any effect from the looks of it. Caffeine already talked about. Gluconone or lact lactone that is used typically by your, your liver to actually get rid of toxins like basically tell your body you need to get rid of this compound tags it for excretion uh again however unless you have some sort of deficiency which isn't the issue for like again like 99.9 percent .9 of the population you don't really need 
any extra. Uh, in acetyl L cartonine, we kind of talked about cartonine already. Uh, velvet bean seed extract. Again, with, when these companies put in extracts, we don't know what that is. And the thing is, though, we have no idea of knowing what's actually in it. And because of that, I can't really talk about it much because we don't even know what's even in it uh, on the chemical side of things. Uh, so I'm just gonna skip over right now. So they have some different tyrosine variants down here in their focus complex. Now, tyrosine is again an important amino acid and it is a precursor for uh, some neurotransmitters in your brain. But again, having more of this doesn't necessarily make your brain function any better. Unless you have some sort of deficiency, it's really not gonna do much for you. Your body's very adept at maintaining balance. And if you give it too much of something, it's just simply not going to use it. It's just going to get rid of it. Um, adenosine 5-triphosphate disodium, or ATP. Okay, so this is actually kind of weird. Every cell in your body needs ATP to function correctly. However, it is constantly recycled, constantly being turned over. And you don't need to consume any from your diet. So this is really weird why they include it, because... I don't see why you would need to consume more ATP when your body just, you know, naturally recycles all of it. Again, they have these extracts, not really sure what's in them. Uh, there's so many different phytochemicals in every plant on earth that who knows what that could be floating around in here. Um, antioxidant complex, interesting. Okay, so you got all these different, you know, fruit extracts, but what I want to talk about is this antioxidant craze. You hear antioxidants and you think like, oh, it's going to help protect my body from damage because uh, there were some studies way back in the day that showed that uh, your body can be damaged by something called free radicals, which are these little uh, chemicals or basically uh, compounds in your body that can uh, be produced through, you know, day-to-day -day activity that can lead to damaging different tissue cells, that sort of stuff. Um, and people thought for the longest time is that you need to counteract these. Uh, by consuming more antioxidants to prevent that sort of damage, prevent these free radicals from doing anything. In recent years, this really hasn't held up that well because we, our body actually uses these free radicals for self-defense. In fact, uh, your immune system, one of the ways that it kills these nasty bacteria or viruses or cancer cells are by producing free radicals that just, you know, straight burn up the uh, invader. The uh, long story short is that antioxidants aren't all they're chalked up to be. And they're not a, you know, a panacea for everything that ails you. The inclusion of these antioxidant complexes, I don't really see how this would benefit uh, anyone in particular in terms of like gaming performance. I got my G Fuel ready here. I'm gonna dissolve it in some water, wait 30 minutes like before, and put it to the test to see if it can actually increase gaming performance. So it's been about 30 minutes since I had the G Fuel, and actually let's put it to a test to see if it really does increase performance. I just finished the G Fuel test, and boy is it interesting. Let's take a look. Like before, we really don't see any change in our accuracy with either caffeine, Monster, or G Fuel. It's basically the same with or without any of these different drinks. However, let's take a look at our other uh, outputs. You can see here that while we see an increase in our target's hit per second with both caffeine and Monster, it is absolutely no different with G Fuel. Across all three drinks, we see the exact same increase. And we see the same effect on these other uh, outputs. We, we see no change in our reaction time that is due to just D G Fuel. You can see that the decrease in reaction time is on par with just caffeine by itself. It's no different. And if you look at the test score, we see the exact same thing too. G Fuel provides absolutely no advantage compared to just having caffeine. And this highlights one of the things I wanted to investigate. Why are we paying a premium for a drink that is just having the same effect as caffeine alone? What this is telling us is that there's really no advantage of having a game-specific energy drink or just an energy drink by itself. This data here really highlights that G Fuel really doesn't do anything special. It unfortunately just does the same things that caffeine does by itself. And it doesn't offer any advantages over just having some tea or coffee. 
So if you're looking to actually have a drink to, you know, make you more awake, make you uh, react faster, have something with a little bit of caffeine into it. So I really hope you all enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. There's a lot of misinformation out there about whether or not a certain drink or something can improve your performance in game. And I hope this helped clarify that you honestly don't need to pay premium for something that simply is no more effective than just having something with caffeine by itself. And I'm really looking forward to making more videos like this, hoping to explain the science behind some game performance, as well as looking into whether or not uh, anything out there can actually help improve how you play.